Hello, welcome to Undrafted Hockey Fan. We're here to talk about the San Jose Sharks, one of my favorite players. And actually, I'm not just for this. One second. All right, now this is the appropriate wear for the San Jose Sharks video. So today we are going over their preseason, offseason, and going over some of the exciting things they're going. I'm so excited they finally have a direction too of actually tanking. Uh, and I've been looking forward to this. I mean, I was not looking forward to a tank, right? But I'm just looking forward to, to a direction. I just a little bit confused. Um, by the way, it is storming, so if you hear the rain, it is that's what's happening right now. It's raining. It's a crazy sudden thunderstorms in Michigan. So, but I'm excited. We're going to be going over the, the sharks. Uh, I get a couple big moves they did. You know, they had a new GM last year, and so let's go over some of the content. Uh, so we'll just jump over to the next page, and here we are. San Jose Sharks projected for almost four million dollars in cap space, which is huge going to a rebuilding team um they did draft a great player uh in will smith at uh, i think third overall was um or no, fourth overall my bad one of the two anyways so they picked him up which is a great pickup for the future great center depth they're going to be having it definitely a first line center moving forward uh and this is the type of cast base you want to be able to make your moves which they definitely took on some bad contracts which will be going over some of those uh pretty soon actually so i want to go over some of their losses they had this uh coming up uh, oh that was an advertisement i apologize but let's jump over to it so some of their losses this year uh noah gregor i really liked james Reimer signed signed with the red wings um Resigned Zetterlin from that was from the Timo Meyer contract. By the way, they did lose Timo Meyer at the trade deadline. They also lost um, Jacob Megna. They also lost uh, Eric Carlson. So a couple of big guys they lost. At the, uh, so that was the trade deadline that they lost Timo Meyer. By the way, and got a couple of big pieces. I also did a breakdown of that trade. If you want to see in my video, it's a little bit back, but you see I did a breakdown of that as well. If you want to see that, so Aaron Dell, the third third line goalie. Third line goalie. Third goalie, um, Mackenzie Blackwood, re-signed as a free agent, right? That was a great pickup. A couple of people there also gone. Josh Gadjevich. Um, they also traded for Anthony Duclair. Okay, we'll, we'll go over a couple of these things. Giovanni Smith signed as a two-year, two, two years as well. They lost uh, Jeffrey Veal. Like we're going to go over a couple of these things as well. So let's just jump over some of the trades right now. Um, real quick, going over. Uh, here we go. Anthony Duclair. They picked up uh, for Stephen Laurent and a fifth round pick. And Duclair definitely going to be a great pickup. I think he has one year left on this deal, and so I mean it's a player that is a comp he's a uh, injury. He's injury prone. Where he did not play a lot last year, um, but he is not three million dollars. Imagine you know Anthony Duclair. You can probably get a third round pick for him at the trade deadline. Uh, and Steven Laurent wasn't going to be a big factor in your future as well. The fifth round pick is not a big deal either. They definitely an upgrade with Anthony Duclair. Um, you know, a small AHL trade right here. But the big trade, of course, everyone knew. The Eric Carlson trade that we all talking about. We were waiting for it to happen. And I'm surprised they were able to get this much for him. Again, another trade that I did break down fully. Um, but we're just going over, over the San Jose Sharks portion of this. Getting Mike Hoffman, um, again, which is good for Montreal off offloading that. Uh, they'll probably be able to, if he can have a bounce back season, you can probably get a good pick for him. Um, Mikhail Granlin uh, from the Pittsburgh, again another offloaded contract that they wanted to get rid of. Uh, again, probably get like a third or second round pick for him. Again, all these are retaining, probably definitely retaining half on all of these, so you can get the better picks. Uh, Jan Ruda, a stable defenseman, uh, and of course getting that first round pick. Again, top ten protected. I I believe the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to be. Um, a, a playoff team, so I don't think the 10, top 10 projection is going to be anything anything grandiose right there. Uh, I'm surprised they still had it on there, uh, but it is what it is. So, anyways, so that's some of the big uh, additions and subtractions they, they had here. Uh, again, I'm going to go over a couple more people that they picked up as well. So, um, one of the ones they signed, so they ended up signing Philip Zadina. A little screw. Uh, zoom in. Uh, signed Bill, so Philip Zadina, who was um, had his t contract terminated by the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, it was a mutual contract. They, he said, "Hey, I want to move on somewhere else. I want a better opportunity." Uh, signed a one-year deal. Uh, I think this is a great deal for him, uh, in the sense that he's he's losing money. He lost guaranteed money. He actually is making less money than his previous deal, and he had more term on it. Um, but it is, it's a proven contract. I hopefully, I really hope that he gets a, a pop off season. I'm going to put him high up in that lineup just so he can start really showing what he can do. I'm, I was bummed that they, the Red Wings uh, terminated the contract with Sedina, 
But again, they did. I think Steve Eisman was ready to invest time and energy into him. But on a stacked team like the uh, Red, let me say stacked. I would say a more solidified team like the Red Wings is a team that just didn't have a place. He was looking at more like that 12th, 13th forward. So uh, this is giving him a huge opportunity to play on a rebuilding team. So I'm really happy for Zadina. Um, signing, of course, Casper uh, Halluton. Uh, help me out. I think he's Finnish. I, it's not, it looks like a uh, Finnish name. Uh, to a three-year contract. Awesome. And, of course, here is the Eric Carlson deal right here. So I want to go over their uh, line combinations real quick. So we're going to do the forward first. I get a lot of new players. Look at this. You have Anthony Duclair, Philip Zadina, Jacob Peterson. Um, you have Mike Hoffman. So um, coming over some of the players that I think – Again, this is a rebuilding team, so you're not looking you're not looking for the best stars, but I do think you're looking at people who are assets, who who you can um, create value for, right? And who you are excited about moving forward, right? So going over some of the people you can create value for, right? Alexander Barabanov. Actually, well, actually, I'm gonna go over to the depth charts right here, which is gonna show some of their stats too, so we can kind of go over what they how they performed this past year. You got Barabanov, Luke Conan playing the top line. That is, I don't think it's gonna happen at all. Okay, well, we're gonna, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Luke Cunning, 13 points in 31 games. Not too impressive, but um, he, again, in, oh, injury, he's on the injury list, that's why. So that's uh, that's why he's not on that one. So um, hopefully he comes back. Uh, Logan Couture, a great player, 60, captain, 67 points in 82 games. Um, great player. I mean, for $8 million, you're getting probably a little less than you want from him, but I thought he was a great player. 47 points in 868 games for Barabana for value for a $2.5 million contract. Phenomenal contract. And he's UFA, so they could either, at 29 years old, a little bit older, so I imagine they'll end up flipping him. Um, Luke Cunning, if you can, he's an RFA, so they have team control, but they could they could sell at him on the deadline as well. Um, Mike Kaufman definitely going to be looking to sell. Half point per game is not terrible. And if you were able to sell him off for $2.5 million, that is something that if he can provide the value, uh, I think that might work out for them. Uh, Thomas Hurdle, looking, I mean, signed long term, look at 2030, 2030 right here. So 60, 63 points in 79 games. Probably taking over the C if they end up trading Logan Couture. Um, I don't know if they're going to be able to. I don't know if he has no movement cause or anything at this point. But I think that is something that is an option. Uh, Mike Greer did say he was open to moving everyone besides Thomas Hurdle at this point. Um, and of course, any prospects. So, uh, Anthony Duclair again, another player, half point per game. Again, if you can retain, you just retain half on that. Getting Anthony Duclair for 1.5 million, huge, right? Uh, again, you're not seeing a lot of long term contracts. Look at this. See, the longest term contract you're seeing is here, Hurdle, right? In the, for the forwards, is till 2030 and 2027 for uh, Kachurb. Look at this 25, 25, 24, 24, 25. I mean, these guys have a year or two left. So, a lot of these guys are going to be, you're going to be, Flipping and churning and burning. So um, we'll see how that works out. So Dean, again, needing to prove a deal and everything. So I'm excited for the opportunity for him. Um, Mikhail Granlin, uh, probably end up sticking around. Uh, I mean, that's not a terrible value right there. If they can retain on that, again, we're retaining on all these. As many as you can, right? You ship off the guys that are not in your window. At this point, their window is is your all your prospects. You're thinking like Borlo and some of those players. So I think Borlo is the, considered the scratch, I think. Let me go down here to Borlo. Like, Thomas Borlo, 21 years old. That is now your, <laughs> that is your window right now. 21 year olds. You want young players who are who uh, are ready to come, or not ready to come up yet, but you're, you're letting them develop in their system and everything. And you're just gonna sell off a lot of the assets. You're, that's how you do a proper rebuild. You ship everyone off and you, it's what Arizona did, it's what Chicago did. Uh, and it really worked out for Chicago. I mean, then Arizona got Logan Cooley. So they're definitely not mad about that at all. So uh, Zetter, I mean, these guys are fourth line guys making less of an impact. I like Oscar uh, Lindblom. I hope he pans out as well. Again, but he's a little older at 27. So um, again, maybe some of these guys they can move out, but you guys definitely need people playing for your team. So uh, moving on to the, uh, to the defense. Um, Looking very different without Eric Carlson here. Jan Ruda really just bumping up there. Look at that. Just essentially taking that top spot um, for Eric Carlson. Um, but again, these guys are just not, they're not real needle movers. Um, the, one of the, the big caveats, I was not caveats. One of the things, the issues is that you have Mark Edward Vlasic at $7 million till 2026. Um, really more of a boat anchor, unfortunately. It's a huge contract for you guys. I, mean, I eventually think he'll get body out. He's 36 years old. 
Oh my god, he's 36 year old. So he's gonna be here till like 38, 39? Jesus Christ. Okay, well, I mean, you're gonna have some bad contracts. That's, that's not even movable at this point. How did he get that long of a contract? Okay, anyways, moving on. Anyways, so uh, Mario Ferraro, they're definitely gonna be keeping him. Phenomenal. I think he played like, 21 minutes, playing more than, like, I think he's gonna be on a better team. When it develops, I think he's going to be a staple on this team. I think they want to keep him long term. Uh, Matthew Benning, fine, you know, 24 points, 77 seven games, not too terrible actually. In this case, uh, Kyle Burrells, Redeem Shemek, uh, yeah, and, I mean, some of these guys, I think they're just players. This way. We're filling in right now. Same with Kako, uh, Kop, uh, Kakinen, uh, and Mackenzie Blackwood. Um, guys didn't really put up great numbers, 0. 0.883 and 0. 0.89. I mean, okay, 3.85 goals against their average. Yeah, goals against average. Jesus. This is not going to be a good team. It's not going to be a fun team. I mean, it'll be fun because you're going to need some of the – I mean, within not with injuries, it's going to be fun. But with injuries, you need some of the young guys to come up. But really, you're looking towards the future. I mean, look at here. You're looking at guys like – like William Eklund right here, right? You're looking at Thomas Borlo. Some of these guys that are really excited about. Ozzy uh, Weisblatt. Like, these are the guys that you're looking forward to and you're super excited about, okay? Uh, these guys got a couple of cups of coffee in, in the NHL as well. Um, yep, Henry Thrun, Thrun, who they picked up from, they traded for his rights from Anaheim, right? So there's some of these guys I'm really excited about. Uh, Philip Vostal, he just, he just, uh, or I said, he just went, got loaned to uh where is he at he just got loaned to um one of the other teams out in uh i believe was sweden um but yeah will smith as well uh i mean you you have young guys that you're excited about i'm not super familiar with their young team but i actually really hope oh by the way they also signed um they also hired ryan miller and thomas vanek to their development and scouting uh development for ryan miller for the goaltending and thomas vanek for scouting so I'm hopefully thinking that the they can get their uh, oh look at this hopefully they can get their uh, goalies figured out and and get their I would say their goalies figured out I want them to get everything figured out of course but they're going through a rebuild and I'm excited they signed these these big names who you know big Buffalo Sabres uh, players uh, Ryan Miller had his, his number retired by the Buffalo Sabres so I'm excited to see what happens I'm I'm bummed uh, by the way this is an Eric Carlson jersey. You can see uh, Carlson. So I'm bummed that he's gone, but I'm happy he's on a team that he's going to thrive with, with Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin. So hopefully we see the best of Eric Carlson. I hope we see playoff Stanley Cup aspirations for Eric Carlson. Um, he's moved on, but I'm excited I got his jersey. So anyways, so let me know what your thoughts are on San Jose Sharks. I'm a big fan of them. So let me know what your thoughts are. Hit like, subscribe, and uh, love you.